For the web accessibility section of the course, there is some reading that you should do in advance. It's under the Supplemental Reading tab on Blackboard in this accessibility folder. I'm going to just briefly overview these documents, starting out with the PDF here that gives an overview of various types of disabilities. This is the overview document. I would certainly read through this as you have time. Uh, a lot of individuals um, without disabilities might not be aware of what disabilities exist and what we mean by those disabilities. For instance, um, you know, we might have a idea of what blindness means, but not necessarily low vision. Uh, so this is about eight pages. It's actually a little shorter than that, but you should certainly read through this uh, as you have time to get a little bit of an idea of what we mean by various disabilities. And it also gives brief explanations as to problems that individuals with this dis these disabilities could encounter on a website. The next link is to Section 508. Section 508 is a federal law regarding accessibility of websites. There isn't a particular material to read here uh, other than just looking through the, the site, particularly looking at maybe the Be Accessible or Frequently Asked Questions, but just to get a, a little bit of a feel of what Section 508 is. The next link is just a tutorial on creating uh, accessible websites. Just gives a brief description and it focuses on some uh, more common issues and issues that are, um, actually, how should I phrase this, uh, less technical than some of the things we might encounter on a a more in a more advanced web development situation so a lot of the things that are discussed here like the alternative tags are things that that we'll actually encounter so that's that's this website that was the next link on that page uh, then we have this um, this is another page about web accessibility that offers some more technical information I wanted to link to this because um, similar to some of the other material that we've looked at, sort of depends on what you're doing with your site as far as how much you might want to go into regarding accessibility. So that's another good site to look at. And then uh, we have two links for the Web Accessibility Initiative, abbreviated WAI. The World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C, as we know from a discussion in one of our first meetings, is a uh, body that holds standards for HTML, for instance. Um, and there's a lot more involved in their mission, and one of those things is this initiative, the Web Accessibility Initiative, which discusses not only uh, barriers that individuals with disabilities might have when they come to websites, but also uh, it provides techniques for um, addressing some of those barriers. And that is what the next link is too. You could actually get to this next link by going to guidelines and techniques and then um, clicking on the web content. But anyway, um, we could also just use the link in Blackboard and go directly to this page. If you scroll through this page, you'll see a number of techniques. I mean, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of techniques here from general web design to going through HTML, CSS, flash animations, PDFs, uh, just a, a number of techniques here for web uh, accessibility. The WAI initiative is very unique in that not only does it discuss the barriers, it also explains how to correct them, and many times it also um, provides a little sample code to help the developer in how they would make a correction in that area. What I'd like you to do, and in a minute you can pause the video and look through the pages that we've just talked about, 
um, which are in that supplemental reading folder. And then you should choose a technique. And once you've chosen a technique, you should open the, the link up, go ahead and read about that technique, and you're going to make a, a quick post, you know, just four or five sentences that summarizes your, your technique. If we were actually in the classroom, we would actually go around the room. Everybody would pick a technique and we would, you know, go around the room and, and talk about it. Uh, your technique should be unique, so you should look and see what other people have posted before you. Uh, also, uh, you'll need to, to respond to one other student's links, link, excuse me. Uh, but just, you know, scroll down and pick something that sticks out to you or something that might relate to um, text that you're planning to have on, on your site. So, for instance, if you are looking at forums, you might pick something, something like this. Um, Okay, so when you are done doing this, uh, picking your technique and sort of summarizing it and looking through those pages, you will post this in a, a forum, which is also on Blackboard. The forum is under the Labs tab. It's right underneath where we're submitting our labs. You'll just see here Accessibility. And you can go ahead and create a thread. You can actually even reread the instructions if you want to, which is just that you will pick a technique from that list, uh, the W3C, WAI um, list of techniques. You'll briefly summarize it and respond to one other student's post. And this is just to, to um, you know, model the activity that we would have had in class for this session. So go ahead and pause the video and go to the supplemental reading section. Look through these accessibility pages, which in a real class I would have actually asked you to do the class before. But when you're done kind of skimming through these pages, go to the techniques page, which is here. Pick a technique, summarize your technique, and go ahead and post your summary in the forum under the labs tab and then you can right here and then you can respond to to one other student and when you're done with that you can go ahead and resume the video now that we have had a chance to look through those materials under supplemental resources in the accessibility folder and complete the forum activity, I want to return to the class discussions tab and look at the folder titled additional accessibility resources at the bottom of the page. At this point we are going to go through these materials here. The first one being a PDF that discusses accessible web design which essentially is just making the content of our website accessible to individuals with disabilities and through that forum activity hopefully we've seen a lot of ways to accomplish that. There are a lot of reasons why we would want to even bother with this, why we would be concerned about making our website more accessible. These uh, four reasons are taken from the World Wide Web Consortium, whose website we had just looked at for the WAI techniques. The first one is simply to improve our sales as a, an online business. Um, individuals online uh, with disabilities are more likely to make purchases in settings where they can minimize distractions, increase the font size, spend as much time as necessary with the information. These are all things that you probably got from the um, descriptions, the disability um, overview that was available in the supplemental resources tab. Also, uh, our search engine optimization is going to be increased through using the appropriate tags for our information. Other reasons are that uh, we could be creating more efficient pages with a lot of those techniques on um, a lot of the techniques on the WAI site. We there many of those that you read about are also talking about things that are, are just better from 
um, web development perspectives to make the page load uh, more efficiently. Another reason is that it's just the, the right thing to do. That's the social responsibility point. Uh, and another item is that in some cases, there is a legal obligation to make the website accessible. Of course, that would not impact any of the sites that we are making as, you know, in the, in the class here. There are some laws uh, that relate to web accessibility, the most important of which was this Section 508. We're going to be looking at that in a few minutes, but the Section 508, this is the page that you looked at here under the Supplemental Resources tab. On your project, you, this is recommended to use adjustable font sizes using logical styles rather than physical styles. This one here is, rec is required, excuse me. Number two is required, including that alternative text on your images. That would actually, you know, deduct from your grade. So we definitely need to be including alternative text on our images and tables and other material that is not you know, text already. Looking at the next handout, this handout just tells you where the accessibility material is through the textbook. It can be a little complicated to find the discussion on accessibility in the textbook because it's, it's sort of scattered through the book. So if you look through this handout, you can find the pages where there's this scattered discussion. Just to provide you an example, I've gone ahead and opened up the electronic copy of the book. You can see the first page, uh, pages 4 and 5, talks about accessibility. We see a discussion of Section 508. I believe the next, um, the next item is on page 27. And this is how they mostly look. There is the universal accessibility symbol and just a, a little section in the, the book that discusses an accessibility technique. All of these are listed here, so you don't have to, you know, flip through the book. You could just find them at a glance. The next item we want to look at in the um, Additional Accessibility Resources folder is this document. If I scroll down, here, these are from Section 508. So Section 508 applies to federal, um, well actually let me rephrase that a little bit differently. I had stopped the video for a minute because I realized this would be an easier way to explain the, the law. So Section 508 is from 19, uh, 1998. It's actually an amendment to an earlier law but it dictates that uh, information technology needs to be accessible. We need to eliminate the barriers or limit the barriers, excuse me, for individuals with a disability. If it's federal government or the state and local entities that receive government funding. So Section 508 does not just apply to websites, it also applies to things like photocopiers or um, application software like Microsoft Word that might be used by these government entities. One of the items though are websites. This particular area of Section 508 describes 16 areas where websites need to be accessible. I had stopped talking for a moment there so you could take a look at them and just sort of scan through them. The last thing in the accessibility section on Blackboard is this tool, WAVE, the Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. With this tool, we could enter websites and let us, let's go ahead and enter in the college's website and take a look at it. It does take a moment for the evaluation. See, it's working on the, oh, that was actually pretty quick, um, on the left there. 
This is a tool that evaluates the accessibility of a website and we could at this point go ahead and click through as errors are red, um, alerts are potential items, uh, features, structural elements, and HTML5, these are not actually problems. They're just um, more discussions of the accessibility of the website. So you don't look at this and think, oh my gosh, this is, this is horrible. Um, anyway, you could go ahead and, and look through that, or you could try with the WAVE tool. You could try to look at other websites that you might be familiar with, like um, Amazon or CNN. I'm going to go ahead and look at CNN's site because CNN, uh, well, let's wait for it to, to come up here. I'm actually surprised that it's so so high. CNN tends to be a, a very accessible website. So you can look through that. Uh, another thing is that you could look through the site without the formatting issue, the, the formatting and view the accessibility of it this way. I think this is an interesting thing to do with your own site. And we'll talk more about what these styles are, what's what's going on with with that. Contrast is one of the very big uh, issues as far as accessibility, so it's also a, a tool for that. Anyway, I encourage you to use the WAVE tool to check out a few sites and see what sort of errors uh, come up. It definitely helps you learn a little bit more about accessibility. Also though, I would not be afraid that I would not, I'm going to take the Section 508 site and put it in here. I want to do this for a particular reason, which is that I would not think that every time there's an error, there definitely is an error. For instance, when you look through the problems here, like let's look at this one. Um, hmm, well I guess that is actually an issue. Um, I had looked at this website before and there were a number of issues brought up. For instance here, these alerts that are saying that the attribute or the title tag for the link is the same as the actual link. Well, there isn't actually anything else to say here. We're linking to these individual web pages. It's not like we're saying, you know, news is here, and I could put in the title tag, the, the link to CNN, for instance. So I only wanted to show you this on the Section 508 website, which is obviously going to try to do everything they can to be accessible, to demonstrate that um, just seeing a lot of numbers here isn't necessarily an indication that there is something wrong with the site. You would actually need to start opening these up and going through them and seeing what the, what the actual issue was. That is the end of the accessibility discussion, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video now.